And Father, we thank you for the presence of your spirit and your word that are life in our spirits. Our eyes, understanding, are opened by your spirit. As we hear your word today, we will come into a deeper place in Christ Jesus. Faith and hope will be stirred up in our hearts. Directions will be received. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you can have your sins. Hallelujah. Let's go. All right. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Numbers chapter 13. And today, I want to talk to you about overcoming the fear of failure. Overcoming the fear of failure. Maybe I'm going to ask you to turn somewhere else. <laughs> first Corinthians first. I'm just going to do what I feel led in my spirit. This is going to be very different from the other service. Everybody, please look up here. I know you're talking about, but look up here. How does God help us succeed? I want to show you. This might be one of the biggest secrets that I've learned in my life regarding success for a Christian. First Corinthians 2, verse 9. This might be one of the biggest things that's helped me in my entire life. This I'm telling you. In my entire life. And any success you've seen, this will be one of the things that really helped me. And I would hardly say things like this. First Corinthians 2, verse 9. Let me show you. The Bible says this. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has he entered into the heart of man, the things that God has what? So guess what? How does he enter into the heart of people? The things. So watch this now. They are prepared things. And that's why we're praying for clarity. Because they are what? Prepared things. It's one thing for you to work. My wife always says something. And she's right here. She says, anytime, she says, anytime you're coming home, don't get home and say you're hungry. He said, it takes longer time to get the food ready. He says, once you're coming home, 20 minutes, tell me ahead of time. So as soon as you get home, the food is ready and nobody's under pressure. But thanks to me, I always tell them when I get home. But when I get home, what that does is this. There's now delay because the food is what? Not prepared. Once you work on something that is not prepared, there will be delay. So, God says, so it's one thing for you to pray and say, Lord, I want to do this. And they begin to pray it for you. But it's another thing to say, I'm doing what God has prepared for me. So, see what it says. It says, eyes has not seen nor ear heard, neither has he entered the eyes of, into the heart of man, the things the Lord has prepared for them that love him. So, there are things this is why, as a Christian, let me tell you, as a Christian, this is why you must believe and know this. There are things that God has prepared for you because God is good and kind. So you must know that. Will you drop my monitors very, very sharp and loud? So you must know that. But that's what I'm going to. This is what I'm going to. This is the biggest thing I've learned when it comes to this scripture. The way God helps you succeed is this. Please watch me. You'll be going your normal activities. It could be prayer or no prayer. And this is what God wants to do when God wants to bless you. He will just put an idea in your mind. Whew. That idea is not like an angel will come down from heaven and say, Way. No, no, no. It's just me. Whew. Why not do this? And in doing that, it may be a simple thing. Oh, I hope you know that was how Next Level started. It was just a simple, it was just like, okay, we had some challenges. Let's pray. And I was praying by myself. But after praying for myself, I said, let me get the leaders to pray. And we all began to pray. And someone says, Pastor, why are you getting us to pray? Let the whole church pray. And we all began to pray. And now, we will have sometimes 250,000 people praying on a day. The reason I'm saying so is this. I also remember things that God has clearly told me to do I would get many years that I never did. So, how does God help you succeed? He will just put an idea and say, 
Look at that house. Buy it. Look at that business. Start it. He will just put that idea. And you will not know that that idea is your connection point to a breakthrough. For example, I'll give another example. I told about next level, how I did it and it worked out well. Good. About 10 years ago, I was living on the mainland and I was not pastoring the Lekki church. We had the pastor here and God spoke to me and say, move to Lekki. And and he wanted me to pastor the church. But like, no, that's not right. That pastor is here. This is here. And, and every year, I will remember I tell the pastors every year. I'll tell them, I'm moving to Lekki. Because God said so. Eventually, that decision led to an attack that the leaders will tell you about. But coming here right now, the things we've been able to accomplish... It's almost as if we've been here. It's, we just got here. But we've been here for many years. The reason I'm saying so is that a lot of you are saying God do something. But God is putting smart thoughts in your heart. Talk to her. Talk to him. Rent that place. Buy this. Buy that. And, and the reason why I'm saying, if I, because I just came from this retreat, one of the things that God did for me was all the things he has told me that I've forgotten. And this is why retreats are very powerful. I hope you're planning for wine press in January. Because one of the things is that you begin to write down. Some of you don't need new instruction. You need to go back to the low things he said. And the reason why you don't do it are great reasons. You'll be like, um, this is the reason. This is. But you know God has things he has prepared for you. So guess, guess what we do? We we'll leave what God has prepared for, the, for us. We go and look for things we want to prepare for him. One time I spoke to a lady, she was telling me about her wife, um, her husband. And she said, one thing I love about my husband, and that thing since I heard it about three years ago, he said, my, the husband is a pastor. He said, my husband is a man that there's nothing God has told him to do, he has not done. I said, your wife said this? And she said to my hearing, he said, no, there's not that I know that God has told him to do that he has not done. He said, he would rather die doing it than not to do it at all. And I made up my mind. That that's my life. I'm saying so because how does God, how does God bless you? He says he will put things in your heart. Simple. It could put as simple as move your house. Move it to VI. You will not know why. Move it. When I left the mainland to move to the island, you must remember that the house I was living in, I didn't used to pay rent because it was a gift. The rent was all paid. So I moved to a house where I started paying rent. It looked like a bad decision. But today, it's one of the best decisions. The question is this, and bring out your pen and your paper. What has God told in the last three years that you have not done? Write it somewhere. And put a date, you will do it. Put a date, you will do it. All of you online, write it. What has God told you? Look at NLP conferences. It came from an instruction. Just one instruction. We got to the UK. The success of NLP conference is not even that everywhere went to, it was packed out. That's one success. The major success of NLP conference is that as we began to do it, all ministries in Nigeria within our generation began to do the same thing also. We became the gate opener for many other generations. So you will see many other ministers, they now went to London, they went to the US, they went to this, they went to that. I'm glad. Because what God will do, God will do. But your ranking will be lost. Your position will be gone. So the question is, is what does God want you to do? In your business and finance. And you know that God wants you to do this. Sometimes, it's not even that God wants you to do that. He just wants to live where you are. And that's why you must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you don't know the Holy Ghost, you're a joker as a Christian. Ah! You don't know the Holy Ghost. It's, it's, you must know him. There's, there's no Christianity without knowing the Holy Spirit. How do you pray? How do you fellowship? How do you worship? Without knowing? Because the inspiration, it says the things he prepared. These are the things prepared up 
the spirit, for the spirit, distributed and communicated by the spirit. The property we bought, I was sent the property, but I did not like it because I didn't like the location. So I didn't even bother to go. We we're looking at some other places, but it had failed. Two or three had failed. In fact, the person that sent to me, sent to me after first service, he said, there's this property, but I know you will not like it because it's not where you want it to be. I said, that's true. One day as I was praying, I was saying, Lord, this property we need. I was praying. God says, but you have the property. I said, I do not. He said, but it was sent to your phone. I said, nothing was sent to my phone. Then I went to check my phone. I saw it there. I said, oh. And I said, someone to go and look at it. Someone said, it's very good, but it's very far. That discouraged me again. So I canceled it. By the time we went to negotiate to pay, the owner of the property asked me, do you like the property? I said, I've not seen it before. He said, huh? You want to pay a property that costs five billion? You've not seen it? I said, I've prayed. He said, oh, sorry. Is that how you people operate? <laughs> glory to God. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know why I'm saying this to you? As I was praying to come into the service, the Spirit of God began to remind me. He said, I know you have things to share share this and the reason i'm saying this now is that there are people online and on site that god needs you to hear this some of you the next decision might just be to be a cell leader the other day i was one of the brethren was testifying about how they got married she said when i had trouble i felt led to be going to nlp physical center to pray as i was praying because of relationship trouble and the mess she was in she did not realize that the person that will marry her was under basin praying there and the person, when I was praying, I just saw this lady praying vigorously. I said, ah, someone that prays like this will be a good wife. But when God says, go to NLP to pray, she did not know it was to get a husband. She thought it was her prayer. Sometimes, you must know the wisdom of God is wiser than the foolishness of men. And the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. The reason why we don't obey God is this. We are waiting for it to make sense first. It doesn't make sense. It make God. Praise God. You must realize that. It doesn't make sense. It makes God. God says, ask about that house. You say, I don't have the money. Did he say pay? He said, ask. Glory to God. I, I hope you begin. Some of you will be a small thing. Start going to sell. Become a sell leader. Give your house for a sell venue. Oh, Make sure as you go now, give, make sure that you give a millionaire. Sow it as a special seed. You're like, why am I doing that? I don't even have something to sow for. God that says you do that knows the reason why. Abraham thought he was taking Isaac to offer a sacrifice. <laughs> he didn't know that the one that asked for the sacrifice has prepared for himself a sacrifice. When he got to offer Isaac, the angel of God said, don't. He said, look on your right. That's the name I should offer. Praise God. When we trust in the Lord, in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. When we do his good will, he abides with us. When we trust and obey, trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So why did I share this story? Because at the root of everything I didn't do was one thing, the fear of failure. That was why I didn't do most of the things. I was always afraid. And, and because, you know, when you study temperament, my temperament is, has to want to be fearful. Then two, just the way I've been brought up, I could be fearful. Just a fear of failure. But when God wants to use a man, he would take the fear away. He would take it. Why? Fear and bondage are connected. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Let me show you quickly. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. Fear and bondage are together. 
Let's read together. Are you there? Look on the screen. It says, for we have not received what? To what? The manifestation of the spirit of bondage is in the fear. So, if a Christian lives under fear, he's really oppressed by a spirit of bondage. So, God says, go into all and gas. You say, who do I know? Come on, don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. The one that sent you there, knows, he knows who you should know. It's time to fall in love again. You say, I'm afraid of falling in love again because of all that. I've been through a divorce. I've, I've done this. I've done that. I've, I've been through. Hey, 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 hey. Don't talk like that. Or else you will subject yourself to bondage. I just noticed the reason. The reason. Because I thought, I want to do this because sometimes it's a fear of failure. Sometimes it's a fear of success. That's why a lot of Christians are stuck. There's a big step you have to take in your finance. You've been doing 10 million every year. Now you want to do 50 million. But there's this step you have to take. And that's what you know. You've prayed. God said go ahead. But why have you not taken it? The, 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 the fear of failure. That if it fails. The same thing. The, 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 this guy has come to you and says I love you. And I said mm -mm, please. Don't love me. Because I've had the divorce or had the breakup. Now I'm afraid again. Have you not seen Christians that they feel something in their body and they need to go to the hospital and they don't want to go? And they will say, I don't want to go because I'm praying, which is a lie. They don't want to go because they're afraid. They don't want to hear something. It doesn't matter what you hear. Whatever the report is, our God can correct it. Listen to me. Faith does not deny facts. Faith corrects facts. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Faith, no, no. faith takes truth and superimposes truth on facts. That's what faith does. So if you go and they say you have cancer, I say that's not a problem. Is it today that my God heals cancer? Don't you know I attend NLP? What do you think we do there? Is it for playing? If there's no trouble, would there be testimony? You will tell the devil, you don't know I go to harvesters. You, you say, <laughs> harvesters, oh, our slogan is God is good and kind to us. Yeah. One brother said, they had rejected me, you know, from the US and rejected and said, we cannot do your job because you don't have papers. And our company don't fight for papers. The brother told the HR recruitment officer, he said, tell the company that I said they can make an exception for me. <laughs> the HR recruiter, an American, said, <laughs> you obviously don't know how the system works. The brother said, do me a favor. Tell them as I've said. He said, okay, I will try. She sent an email. In 24 hours, they got back to him and said, we will recruit an external firm to advise us on this. They recruited the firm and got the lawyer and said, for you, we'll make an exception and fight for your visa. You must know you're special to God. He says, he's prepared for those that love him. Mm -mm, we're not the one that struggle to have children. Amen? No. We're not the one that struggle to give birth. Amen? We don't struggle to marry. Amen? We don't struggle for approvals. Amen? We don't struggle for visas. Amen? Our children don't struggle. Amen? Why? Because we're loved of the Lord. Glory to God. Numbers chapter 13. Verse 1. So, overcoming the fear of failure. And, and the reason I'm saying so is that, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I'm a school in faith teaching. But my major challenge with faith teaching is that sometimes faith teaching can be so theoretical that the practical thing everybody needs to do, it's missing. So, someone says, how do I have faith? Because, can, can I be, uh, Lord, I have boldness. Should I tell you the truth? In the business place, People that are not born again express more faith than Christians. When Christians are talking about business, we talk about two million. The way Christians are for twenty thousand naira, and two hundred thousand naira, and two million naira, you will just open that not born again, and they just say 250. and they just in millions. And that's what they're talking about, because because <laughs> because it's it's capacity based, because faith is not talk; it's action. You can look at 
say, I have faith, I have faith. Bible, Paul says, show me by faith by what you're doing. Go, oh, glory to God. Why is it important for us to overcome the fear of failure? Number one, because fear will limit your potentials. Fear will limit you. Judges chapter 6. I, I know I said numbers, but I'm trying to jump because of time. Judges chapter 6. Oh, glory to God. Judges chapter 6. Verse 13. Gideon said to the angel of the Lord, O oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, why is all this befalling us? Why are they all, where are the miracles of our father? Did not God bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon Gideon and said, Go in thy might and save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Do you believe this? This was Gideon complaining that, Lord, you've not done this, you've not done that. And instead of God to say, I will do something, God said, Gideon, stand up, you have the answer. My God. You are still saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Give me call. God says, as you are, you are a resource. When God told Gideon that, what did Gideon say? Gideon had the fear of failure. What did he say? Look at what he said. He said, oh my Lord, where we shall I save Israel? Like, what? who am I? What do I have? Many of you, God is calling into places, regions, degrees, industries, ministry. And you're saying, who am I? What do I have? What can I do? You know, you tell, maybe you tell the committee that we want to double the sales. You tell your businessman, I want to start doing billions. He says, who am I? What do I have? See what the Bible says. This is very powerful. And I hope I can get someone to share their story. See what he said, what am I, what do I have? Say the next thing. He said, look, my family is poor in Manasseh. And even amongst the poor people, I'm the least. That means I'm the poorest of the poorest. And the Lord said unto him, I will be with thee. Oh, glory to God. He says, I will be with thee. This is the big one. When I read this verse, make sure you shout. He says, I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianite as what? What does that mean? God says, what they need an army for? As one person. Are you hearing? <laughs> hey! What they need an army for as one person. Oh, you will take over. Hallelujah. Let me explain what this means. I want to explain what this means. So, we are trying to build a family house. They've called the four children. Everybody bring 30 million because we want 20 million. God says as one man, once they call you, you just say, how much is it? 120? You write a check. That's what it means as one man. Because normally, it should take the whole army of Midianites to slay is, um, to slay the Midianites. Army of Israel to slay the Midianites. But he says, as one man. You are doing sales. The whole target of your team, only you will bring it in. See, you need to understand what God is saying. God is saying, Gideon, this is what you can do. But the question is this. Did Gideon see himself this way? He didn't. Fear limited his potential. Fear limited what is potential. The question is this. There's potential inside you. You can thrive in the real estate firm. You can thrive in the oil and gas. There's potential inside it. You can be a man of God. You can be a soul leader. You can be a leader for God. But there's potential. But fear, fear cages. He cages your potential like this. Where's my drink? Do you have my drink on the straws? Do you have a bigger straw now? Let me get the. I'm sure, I'm sure you can get a bigger straw. Is it bigger straw there? Okay, it's there. Come, my brother. Come, come, come. You need to drop that and come. Yeah. Yeah. Drink. Hold this and drink. Hold on. Take a microphone. Drink. That's fine. Can you suck it well? No, sir. Why? 
Because the potential is here. But this is how much he can. Because his fear limits what he can take in. So he reduces his fear. And he goes to a bigger straw. So this is, this, this is, this is a small straw. Some people's straw is blocked. Their straw is blocked. They can't suck nothing. That's why they're wondering, I don't have anything in my life. And God says, you have potential. You can't see it. So you, you begin and you do. You, you are struggling. You, see, you think you have no potential. No, there's potential, but the straw is too narrow. Your fear has covered your potential. Your fear has put a lead on your potential. Your fear, they, they've said you're a girl. They said you are young. They said divorces don't do well. They've said, uh, they, they've said men from a kid, you don't do well. And they've said people from that background, they say flash balls and first balls and say women. And they say you are just 25. And they say people from your background. Uh, and you're struggling. And, and when you start growing, they take this straw, they give another straw. This time your fear is less. You're sucking well, right? Type in the microphone. Are you sucking? Very well, sir. Yeah, you're, you're, you're. Yes. Is there another word for? <laughs> sipping, 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 yeah. Sipping, yeah. You're sipping well, right? Yeah. So there's a small straw. There's a big straw. Yeah. But when you destroy the fear, my brother, you just... <laughs> Glory to God. This is the level that God wants you to go into. Where you are not using a tiny straw, a big straw. Where, where you are not sipping, you are gulping. You are gulping. You are gulping. Somebody say yes. So one of the things you have to know is this. That faith. Sorry. Fear will limit your potentials. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I meant to agree. My first book was written three years ago. And it was in, it's till today it's in my email. Everything delivers next year. Next year, so much books are coming out. You, you know why? I want to be honest with you. Because who will read your book? I'm telling you, it tells me, like, you know, I, I looked back, I'm like, oh, wow, how could I believe that dumb statement? What will? International bestseller. Because you know what fear is? Faith is believing something that doesn't exist. Fear is also what? Believe in something that doesn't exist, but in the negative. That's why I tell people, fear is the thief of the future. Fear goes into your future and steals it because it paralyzes your present. God, God told... Uh, me, 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 me. I'm, I'm going to just stop now and, and round up with one verse. Give me a microphone. Who here, you found an area where fear paralyzed you. You know, in the first service, as I began to talk, I, I remember when I started talking, I was very shy. When I started speaking, I was very shy. People that knew me for ages, I was very shy. I used to speak so fast because I was so anxious. But I grew over it. I subdued the fear. You know, as I shared that in the first service, a lady came out and she said, I said, what are you going to do now, now that you don't have fear? She said, she stood up. She said, this standing up and talking is the first thing. He said, I never talk in public. He said, last week I did an interview. I messed it up because of I couldn't talk in front of people. He said, that I'm talking in front of the church. He said, this is my first step. He said, I've never spoken in front of a crowd before. She looked at me she was shaking initially, and then she became strong. That's what happens to you. Because, because once you have fear, you perform poorly. Glory to God. Let me take some stories of people that their fear has hindered them. And some of them are there right now. Some of them are walking through it. Some of them are what they call it, are past it. Anybody wants to share a story with me? Please don't let your fear stop you now. Yeah. There's a lady right front here. Yeah, there's, there's a lady. There's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, praise the Lord, church. Yep. Okay, so um, I'm a student of Unilag, okay. and I do fashion designing, and I also do real estate. But I've been kind of like, you know, scared of people opinion. Even before I could actually accept the mic, now my legs are actually shaking. So um, I have this fear of rejection, and I don't know how to talk to people. In school, they usually think probably I'm um, an extrovert, but I'm actually a shy person. So anytime I want to talk to someone to like convince them to bring their millions of money to come and invest in a property, they say, oh, um, Jibola, I'll get back to you, or I have some plans, and that kind of makes me withdraw. So I stop telling people about it. I lost a deal. Like, a client was going to get a cause of land from my hand, but because I couldn't convince him, I couldn't talk to him, I lost the deal. I was depressed. Did you see what that does? Because of the fear, the client had the money. He bought it from someone else, right? Yes. Watch, the client bought from someone else. Why not from him, from her? Because of a fear. Question, what is first stealing from you? Pass the microphone to that lady. The lady in glasses, yeah. Then I'll come to Chantel to tell me how she deals with her fears. Yeah, go ahead. Amen. Amen. see myself that I'll never get married in life wow. just because of um, the torment my sister went through in marriage and I remember the decision I made then was if this is what marriage is all about I will never get married but to God be the glory I overcame that fear wow. um, the things I saw in her marriage for once, I've been married for seven years now. And for once, I've not witnessed it in my own wow. marriage. Wow. So wow. I overcome that thing. Wow, so good. So good. Are you learning something? Sometimes fear comes from experience. But sometimes it comes from other people's experience. It even happened to you. You read it on social media and fear comes into it. Okay, give, give to Chantel. Yeah. Yeah. So, tell me your fear. How did you overcome it? Good morning, church. Um, PB, uh, you put me on the spot. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me was not growing up in Nigeria, right? And um, being thrown, you know, into the forefront of an industry where we needed to, you know, make an impact. And... Um, for me, the word did everything. So very similar to what you were saying. Um, so your fear was that you grew up in the U.S. I grew up in the and U.S. And they asked you, you made the decision to come back to Africa. We're like, this Onyibo girl has come again with our Onyibo, you know. Um, and obviously not growing up, yes. you know. In and, and you were like, you know, because I can just imagine, you don't understand. The reason why this is big is that if everybody here has the opportunity to live in the U.S., they're not coming back again. <laughs> <laughs> so you lived in the US, you, you stayed in here for years. Yeah. And you came back. Why did you come back? Um, because I wanted to make a change. You wanted to make a change. Absolutely. And, and you're like, not wanted to women in a culture where women. Where, where women are not exactly. So, first of all. And, and in business, they want to be like, oh, baby, oh, baby. You know? Oh, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. So, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the atypical girl. You know, I'm the woman. You know, people talk about the boss chick. I'm naturally. You know, but this is not a boss chick. This is more, you know, a woman who goes after that which God has put on our heart to do, right? Um, but I think what's interesting is that this week, I think I saw in the papers, um, leadership newspaper is saying that, you know, um, getting the award for businesswoman of the year or something like that. Wow. Um, and then not just that, PB, I think every single time consistently, like you said, um, when you face that fear because of the faith, so you feed your faith, and starve that fear to doubt. Wow. Or rather that, you you, know, you, feed, you your feed your faith and, and you starve, starve the, the fear. fear. How do you stop the fear? By the fear has a source. Life. You starve the fear. Faith has a source. You feed your faith. And all you need to do is win one time. And once you win, it's like when David said, you know, David could face a Goliath because he said, I remember what God did when I was with the sheep in the backside of the desert. You know what I'm saying? When I was watching over the sheep, what God did. And so because of that, he had, you know, experience of what God had done. And so because of that, I've been able to apply that in business. But I think, you know, facing fear for me, um, PB, 
has become so second nature now that I do it so easily in the sense that I stand flat footed in the face of fear. Wow. Literally. And say, so what? So and, what? And, and there was a time you all your bank accounts, everything. Yeah, tell me. Yeah, <laughs> tell me. The um, government came at you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. So, um, absolutely. So, literally, I think two, three months ago, yeah. about two, three months ago, I came to meet you and I said, I woke up one Sunday and I got a, I didn't even, I, we saw something in the paper. Well, it was all over social media that um, our company, Mojek, that we had supposedly, um, uh, what's the word? Um, siphoned money. Exactly. Um, we had siphoned money or what have you. And so they said Mojek, the name of the company, and everybody else, right? And so because of that, they put a PND, which is a post note debit. Um, they blocked all our, our accounts. They put all on, they put all the accounts in the. How paper. did you stand during those times? Flat-footed in the face of fear. Oh, wow. I remember you and I. Um, we actually held hands. And I said, there's three things that God is going to do, PB. Stand in faith with me on this. One, this is go God is going to reveal who the Haman, you know, if you know the story of Mordecai and, and, mm -hmm. and Esther, who the Haman was, right? Where it came from, why this is happening. And then on top of it, that God is going to do 10 times, way more, where we were. And what is happening now? Today, PB, we have won the largest contract in the country of about over a million or more um, that we're going to actually be doing as a result as a result of that yeah. but stood in the face of fear and just continued to speak the word um and when see when well, this hey, was hey, done by just, the central just, bank just give god praise father <laughs> i'm telling you just give god praise the, the reason let me tell you why i'm asking her to speak all the women here what is your excuse they said women don't you can. Amen. You are not them. You are harvesters. Amen. In harvesters, our women excel. Amen. They swear. No doubt. That's what they do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see, faith is the ability to stand and move when you can't see the next step. Hallelujah. Let's close with the scripture. Let's go. Second, second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Let's close with this. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. This is so powerful. I hope your faith has been stirred up, right? I hope your faith has been stirred up. And I hope that you realize that faith is not talk. Faith is action. All this for you heard their stories now. Nobody is saying, I spoke, I said. No, no, no. Faith is what? You step out in faith. Step out. Step out. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. See what the Bible says. Are you ready? Can we read it with a loud voice? Hold on, hold on. I said with a loud voice. But of power of love. You, you know what this means? This is how I'm closing. Once you have the spirit of fear, you lose the spirit of power. That's why you always say, I'm incapacitated. I don't have what it takes because power is ability. So, he says, God gives you the spirit of power to shut out the spirit of fear. He says, the spirit of love. So, you move from a dimension of love because faith works by love. And the third thing is, it says, of what? Of what? A sound mind. What's a sound mind means? When you look at a situation, you can make decisions very well. You know how you can do that? Because you have the spirit of faith. So, every time you say, I don't know what to do, Maybe fear has entered. In fact, most of the time people say they don't know what to do is a function that fear is present. Most time when people procrastinate is a function that fear is present. Hallelujah. The righteous are as bold as lion. He has not given me the spirit of fear, but of see, he has not given me the spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Say, I'm going for it this week. I, I, let me let me look at say, Are you going for it this week? Are you going to wash? Are you going to give excuses? Are you going to go for it this week? Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Sister Anna, are you going for it this week? Papa, are you going to fight this week? Are you going to hold back? Sister Charity, are you going to go for this week? We, we, we charge towards it. We are harvesters. We don't give up. We don't cave in. All we do is win by the power of the Holy Ghost. Stand on your feet. Let's pray.